Hey, what's up, guys? Okay, so today I want to talk about this、uh, Sylvester rank inequality, right? Because some people, uh, one of my friend told me that this question is is asked in some like quantitative、uh, research. So I want to like make this. Uh, previously, actually, I didn't know this inequality, right? But、uh, I find the proof is very simple, and、uh, it's not difficult. So share with you guys. Hope you guys can、uh, pass the interview. Not like, not like me as a loser, right? Spend time on YouTube. Okay, so、uh, right. So the one fact that、uh, okay, so in this case that we are assuming that A B are basically complex matrices or real matrices, and n by n, and.、Uh, And the, the trivial inequality that we we know is that rank A plus rank B is definitely greater than rank A plus B. Okay, so notice a fact. Remember that rank A definition. In this case, it's just、uh, the dimension of the image of A. Okay, and the the tool, the important tool is the rank duality、uh, theorem. Basically, it says that、uh, if you have vector space、uh, to vector space V to V. Basically, V to W, then we always have the the dimension the the dimension V is the same as dimension of the kernel T plus the dimension of the image T, and then this is basically rank T. Okay, so use uh everything start from all these elementary tool. If you have these two elementary tool, then hope you can prove this uh this idea. Uh yeah, by by the way, this is trivial. You prove by yourself. Okay, so、uh, our goal basically is find the upper bound of the upper bound of the ring A plus ring B. Okay, so in this video, I will present three proofs. Okay, so proof one. Okay, so、uh, I can assume that say ring A is R. Okay, so and、uh, without loss of generosity, so this is the quick proof that I can assume A is the identity R zero 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 zero. Okay, so uh, right, this is r r n minus r n minus r. Okay, so you can you can prove this by just uh by just change the basis. Okay, because I know that rank A is r, right? So I can make this by identity r by r and n、uh, minus r n minus. R. Okay, then、uh, I can assume b will be b one, b two, b three, b four. So this is like r by r r n minus r n minus r r and、uh, minus r n minus r. Okay, so we know that rank A. Plus rank B, and it's basically the rank A plus rank A B plus I minus A B. Okay, so this use the fact that uh, uh, by the way, this is rank A, right? Rank B. Okay, so rank B, uh, this is B, right? Hopefully, okay. And、uh, it's less or equal to rank A. Okay, so now we use the previous fact, right? You can write as rank so equal to rank A B plus rank I minus A B. Okay, so this is R and the rank A B plus this rank I minus A B. Okay, so so why is this? So I minus A identity, right? This is n by n identity. So n by n minus identity will be zero 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 zero, and if I take b, b as b one, b two, b three, b four, if I compute i n by n minus a times b, then I get zero zero b three b four. Okay, and this is n minus r. Okay, so the rank of this i minus identity b at most n minus r, right? Because all these are zero, so n minus r. So this is n. Plus rank A B. Okay, so what we have shown is rank A plus rank B is less or equal to n plus rank、uh, n plus rank A B. Finish. Okay, so、uh, second proof. Okay, so the second proof is basically uh, uh using the elementary transformation. 
So this proof is much weird. That's hard to understand. But uh, elementary transformation. Okay. Uh, okay. So the idea is the notice the fact. Notice the, the following. So I consider R plus rank AB as so M plus rank AB. Uh, I can write as a matrices, right? So I want to write as a rank of some matrices. So one obvious idea is that this is N, right? So I can put, maybe I put an N plus M N times in here and I have zero, zero AB here. Okay. So this is the first step. Okay, so now you can define matrices that's called M to be I N I N by N zero zero A B, and I make a change of uh elementary transformation, so I can make I M I by N is zero, to make it to be A A A B. Okay, this is simple, right? Because the rank of the matrices will not change, uh, or you can just times A times this, uh, this block by A and add it to the next line. Okay. Okay, so now what's the next? Okay, so this step is basically let me just do something. You just times A here, times A on the first first uh row and add it to the second row. Okay, and then the next step we we want to change into the we want to cancel cancel what cancel this A right. So what we can do is that uh so we want to cancel this A B right. So we can times B negative B here and add it to the second column. Right, so we times b here. T times b, so this become b, and add times minus one add to the second common. Okay, so now the final things you can do a simple transpose. You put a b z a and the zero a and by a. So just flip this to be b and uh, flip this to a uh, book to column. Okay, so finish. Right, so this rank rank of these matrices is just b plus a. Right, or basically, simply speaking, is at most B plus A, right? Because maybe B is zero, okay. or A maybe A is zero, or so. In this case, this matrices at most B plus A. Okay, so this proves that this guy. Uh, sorry, sorry, it's not not at most. It's at least B plus A. Okay, this square is equal to zero. Okay, uh, at least why at least B plus A? Because I mean, need need. This guy, right? This identity is not important, right? Even if you replace this identity, it's still B plus A. Okay, so it's basically greater or equal to rank A plus rank B. A. So we have the right in order to like uh doing this kind of proof, right? That's the doing linear algebra. Then we should have some abstract proof. Right, so our goal is to show that rank A plus rank B. Uh, less or equal to n plus rank a b. Okay, and less or equal to. Okay, so uh, we can use the rank a just the n minus the dimension of kernel a. Okay, and the rank b right definitely just n minus the dimension of kernel b. Okay, and the rank a b will be just the n minus the dimension of uh kernel a b. Okay, so this inequality becomes just simple as dimension of uh, kernel A plus dimension of kernel B greater than equal to dimension of kernel AB. Okay, so uh, hopefully uh, this is uh, uh, fairly straightforward. Uh, if you are not feeling familiar, you can stink a little bit. Yeah, I think this this one is that's already very straightforward. Okay, so uh, idea is very simple, right? Uh, hopefully you get some intuition. So idea is that uh, first I know that uh, kernel B should be a subset of subspace of kernel A B, right? Because any x here, if x belongs to kernel B, that means that B x is already zero. Means that a b x is already zero. Means that x belongs to kernel a b. Okay, so that means that uh, I can I can I can do something interesting. Right, I can uh, write a basis. I can extend the basis. Right, so I can say maybe b one up to b r is a basis. It's a basis 
of kernel B is a subspace. And I extend it so I get B1 up to BR and the alpha 1 up to alpha S is a basis of uh, kernel AB. Uh, okay. So if I do this, then how can, then what can I say? Uh, then what can I say? Uh, what can I say? Okay, I can say that, uh, I can say what? I can ask, I can easily uh, see the following. If I, uh, if I act A, right, if I act A on this alpha 1, then A alpha 2, then uh, A alpha S, they are, uh, they are uh, independent. Okay, the reason the reason is is why they are independent. Right, the reason is that uh, okay. So since there are bases of kernel A B, uh, this means that uh, this means that uh, this means uh, oh, sorry, I'm stupid. That I should be act on B. Okay, so they are independent. B, B, B. Okay, the reason is that uh, they belongs to kernel AB, right? So we know that uh, AB alpha 1, AB alpha 2, or AB alpha S, all 0. Okay, so, but this, this is independent from this previous one, right? So this means that now you, you got B alpha 1 belongs to the kernel of Right, but now what you're saying is that this guy is an extended basis, right? So this this guy alpha one up to alpha s, uh, this one alpha one alpha to s, right? Belongs to kernel, uh, belongs to kernel, uh, it's not be it belongs to kernel a b, but the but not belongs to kernel b. Okay, so this b alpha one should not belongs to, should not belongs to the kernel b. Okay, so uh. Right, so this guy definitely right belongs to the kernel uh kernel A B. And but there are in they are independent. Uh because by definition, right, this of all of this should span into the span into the basis of kernel A B. Okay, so right, so uh right things, right? So they're the A B, right? So they are independent, right? By definition, it's kernel A B, right? So uh, if they are independent, they're that I would not say alpha one alpha two alpha s for the for the basis of kernel A B. Okay, so all these a a b of this guy are independent. A b of this guy are independent, so that means that previous guy are independent, right? Otherwise, that if previous the previous guy are dependent, uh, not independent, their their web map will be uh will be dependent. Okay, so basically, what 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 I want to say, just say I want to say the following. I want to say that uh. Right, if you have vector, all these vectors are dependent, then their map results must be de must be dependent, right? But now, so we know that uh, there, if I act A B, right, these guys are independent by definition. So there are previous map; these are these are dependent. Uh, must be independent. Okay, so from this, that uh, right. So let's go back to here. Uh, go back to here, right from this, that we we can show that uh, B alpha 1 up to alpha S are independent. Okay, and uh, so we know that uh, B alpha 1, B alpha 2, B alpha S are independent vector, are independent in uh, kernel A. Okay, so that means that dimension of kernel A is equal to, equal to the this S, which is S. Okay. And the previously we defined the dimension of the kernel. Okay, so, right. So this is true. Okay, but but what but what but previously what we just say that the dimension of the kernel A B just dimension of B is S. Dimension of kernel. And uh, these guys that's so equal to the dimension of kernel A plus dimension of kernel B. And then you change n minus kernel to be the rank, you prove the results. 
uh, okay, so this is not, this is what's like some, right, something wrong. So this third from the voice. Okay. Okay. So, uh, this is what, uh, what the previous, uh, what is reproof, right? So the third one is already abstract and, uh, use, use this, uh, independent, right? Your dependent thing, you have never dependent. So that means that if previous are independent. That's what I'm doing. So if your map results are independent, then the, then the pre-image is independent. Okay, so map must map dependent to dependent. That means that uh, if you are independent, then the pre-image pre-image must be independent. Okay, so uh, see you guys next videos.